Hey everyone, welcome to Awareness with Ashley. My name is Ashley Stewart. I share a first-hand experience of what it's like living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. You will hear me call this IIH and migraines. I use my own experience to share what living with IIH and migraines is really like. All right, hello everyone and welcome to this week's podcast. So I've been away for a couple weeks. One, I thought I was going to be at a family event. I actually ended up getting sick, so I couldn't go to that. But then last week, I was still recovering from being sick. So I thought I would come on here and just talk about getting sick with migraines and with IIH and essentially how this is affected when we get like even just a minor illness, basically. So I'm actually, first of all, filming this on February 28th, so... This is considered rare disease day, and IIH is actually a fairly rare disease. I may be in remission with IIH, but you guys are my people. That's why I started the channel, was to talk about my life with IIH, and it kind of has evolved more into migraines because that's what I currently deal with, and that's kind of what my current focus is because a lot of things are, like, a lot of the symptoms are quite similar, but... There's a few key differences, so I just want to go over those quickly because of Rare Disease Day being this week. So, the biggest differences for me between IIH and migraines are the, like, thumping, kind of rhythmic pulsatile tinnitus that you often have with it. So, it sounds like you can hear your own heartbeat in your head. That is not something that I have anymore, and... Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. It's not something I have very often anymore. I have had it a couple of times since technically being in remission, but it's never stayed. Like, I had it constantly when I had IIH. The other one is the double vision, of course. So, the double vision is something that I used to have also constantly with the high pressure, and it's not something I really experience anymore. I can occasionally get it with the aura phase of a migraine, but generally the aura phase is a little bit different for me now. Those are kind of the two biggest differences. Otherwise, there's a lot of similarities. Pretty much all of the other symptoms that I have with migraines are something that I had with IIH. They share so much in common. I think a lot of people who have chronic migraine and IIH make very good friends because we, I think, understand each other very, very well in terms of what we're experiencing with symptoms. I find that colds hit me harder now than when before when I didn't have any underlying medical conditions. It's really difficult to actually explain this to people because it seems like, like I think it's a little bit more obvious if you have a like autoimmune condition going on and actually I do actually have an autoimmune condition. So I'm not actually sure if this is psoriasis. I'm pretty sure it is though because it's consistent with what I've had before actually when I was diagnosed with psoriasis, which on my hands and whatever was when I was in university. It was a really rich stress for a year, but I'm actually like, right now, I'm probably the least stressed I've ever been in my entire life, and yet I have one of the worst outbreaks of psoriasis I've ever had. So I've got it on my hands right here, on here, and it's been extremely painful actually it's to the point where I probably need to go to the doctor and maybe get another referral to a dermatologist just because like for the longest time like I really only had it in my head so I think I had it in my head as like I don't even remember how old I was maybe eight nine ten I have to probably go and have someone look at this and I just keep putting it off I absolutely hate going to the doctor and I just really when I'm already dealing with an ophthalmologist and a neurologist I'm just to the point where I'm just tired of specialists like I just want to be able to live a happy life basically but yeah this is getting to the point where it's starting to interfere now so I probably should actually book an appointment with that it feels like it hits harder I felt like I got sicker actually when I had IIH2 I don't remember getting sick a lot when I had was active with IIH like I was just sick all of the time like I don't really remember having like a cold or anything like that and I actually the reason why I get my flu shot every year is 
to try and reduce the chances that I get influenza, but I feel like just the congestion just feels all that much worse, and it just, it can take a little longer to shake it off or to get rid of it than before you had a chronic health condition. It's, it's a little bit difficult to explain that to people because it's so individual too, like, some people may not be affected very much by it at all, and others could be, like, get deathly or feel like they're getting deathly sick when they actually get sick and like I said when I had COVID it I would relate I would say the first week was like a mild sinus cold like very very mild now I say it's very very mild compared to what I just experienced and then the second week was the fatigue that hit me really hard so when I had COVID it was like the fatigue was equivalent to what I felt on the acetazolamide. I actually was saying, I'm just like, oh man, this reminds me of when I was on my that acetazolamide. Like, maybe at the, I'm just trying to think of like what dose of acetazolamide. Maybe like half the amount that we usually take for uh, IIH, which is probably around the 500 milligram mark. So like two tablets a day kind of thing. But yeah, that that medication was so rough with side effects. It was not fun at all. One of the things I did actually notice when I was sick was I was having trouble staying hydrated. And actually, I was almost worried that I had a, a CSF leak because my nose, I have, was soaking through Kleenex. Like, and it was like a very runny type of thing. And it was hurting two at the same time so like I almost was getting to the point where I'm just like do I have a cold or could this be something more serious and like I knew kind of a couple of days into that that it was definitely a cold because I was also kind of coughing a little bit although it pretty much really only did attack my sinuses but when it started to clear up it's like okay yes this was definitely whatever but I almost wondered there for a couple of days it was mimicking a CSF leak out of your nose like where your nose will drip out spinal fluid and like that can be a very serious thing now you know cross my mind just because like it was so runny and like just soaking like just soaking through the Kleenex it was I've never I don't think I've experienced that feeling for a long time I don't know if I experienced it when I had IIH but it just felt like the pressure was so intense so like it maybe it was and you know all of that but I don't think it would have gotten better had it been I don't know enough about this stuff to like know okay like is is this serious like is this worthy of a hospital visit kind of thing because you know that I think a CSF leak I think is considered an emergency, but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's just it just felt weird. It just f felt like in the moment it was beyond what it should have been. It actually got me actually looking at CSF leak just because of you know how badly it was running. This was in the first couple of days before my sinus congestion got really bad and I actually wonder if one of the reasons why I felt so bad is because I was blowing my nose so much because of the amount of fluid that was coming out but I like every time my nose would start dripping like it was so drippy and so runny that like I felt like the need to blow my nose and then it, all of a sudden it just blocked up. I was actually a little concerned too. I was going to get myself a nosebleed. The coughing really came from the fact that I had so much fluid dripping down the back of my throat that I think it was starting to collect in my throat so then it was making me cough. But other than that, like it was pure sinuses. Another thing people don't realize is that for some of us, when we get a cold, we don't get it very often, but when we get it, like, we get it really, like, the symptoms are terrible, and I don't know if it's just because maybe you get used to certain symptoms if you haven't, if you've dealt with colds quite a bit, like, if you constantly are sick, maybe you just get used to it, but it feels like because I don't get a cold usually very often, like, the last cold I had, last time I was sick before COVID was January of 2020, and I'm pretty sure I actually had influenza that time because 
I was chilled, feverish, feeling very, very achy. Like, I just didn't feel very good at all. It came with congestion. Like, I remember being quite congested, but I I had more of a flu-like presentation, I think, with that than I had with this. Like, I felt a little... Uh, the only thing that gave it away that it was definitely a cold after a couple days was I was feeling chilled. So, like, there was no fever, but it was feeling chilled. When I had that whatever influenza-type thing before the pandemic, it felt, like, flu-like. So, like, I was... I don't think I had a chance to test my temperature. I wasn't actually at home when I first got sick. So, like, I just, I couldn't get warm, basically, and that's very unusual. I think I would have been still on medication at that point. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, it's so hard to remember timelines now. So, January 2020, uh, yeah, I would have been, I think, probably starting to come off of the acetazolamide. So, I was definitely still on it. And I don't remember where, where my papilledema was at that point. Because what happened when I was diagnosed with IIH was the papilledema slowly got better with the medication and then it never came back again because I was, I essentially had enough time to lose, start losing weight while the medication was really getting going. So it never really did came, come back to a, a really, really strong point after that initial kind of consult, basically. I'm actually still doing with a little bit of occasional runny nose, but I think it's probably allergies at this point and possibly still getting rid of whatever I have. It seems to be a cold that hangs on a little bit. It's been a little over a week now. So it's Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday. So yeah, it'd be about 10 days tomorrow. 10, 10 or 11 days since I first started feeling like I was getting sick. Like I said, I think just things hit you a little bit differently when you've got underlying conditions and all of that. And people don't often understand that. Usually I manage a cold. So if you're wondering how I manage a cold usually or when I'm sick, I usually drink a lot of tea. And I the only real over-the-counter medication I tend to use is Neocitrin. The Neocitrin is more for at night just so that I can actually like sleep a little bit this time I actually needed other stuff to manage the symptoms so it was definitely a lot worse than normal so like green tea with honey is one of my favorites although that's more of like a like a cough thing I find it helps more with the cough and all of that but I was actually drinking hot water too because it was soothing like the I really like warm liquids actually when I'm not feeling well like, I find that they go down a lot better than, like, room temperature or cold. Also, if I have a sore throat, I tend to suck on lozenges or whatever, but didn't- I had a little tiny bit of a sore throat in the first couple of days, but it pretty much just hit my sinuses. I probably actually talked about whatever that was that I had in January 2020 on the channel because I was doing YouTube at that point. If you guys want to go back, you might be able to even find it. I don't know how what the quality of the video is like, but you know, if you wanted to go back and check that out, I probably would recommend that because it was a lot more of a flu-like thing. I, I may not have mentioned it. I may, I don't really honestly remember at this point. It's nice to sit down and actually explain this because it's not easy. Like this part of having a chronic illness is not easy to explain to others, but it affects me differently than like what chronic illness I th you have, I think really affects on how well you do with some things. Like if you have a lung condition or whatever, and you get something in your lungs, like obviously it's not going to be a good thing at all. Or if you are dealing with obviously like because, and the thing is, is the viruses seem to attack the weakest part. So, like, because I deal with the migraines, it seems like it always goes to my sinuses. I, I remember when I was little, actually, I had asthma and it felt like everything went to my chest. So, I don't know if that's changed. Like, I actually preferred getting a sinus thing over a, a chest thing when I was little because it just felt like it was so much worse in my chest. And actually, I still feel that way because when I get a chest cold... It feels like I can't walk like 15 or 20 feet without getting absolutely breathless even now. And it just reminds me of what I felt like when I was little and had asthma attacks. So it's not fun. The sinus colds now are bad because they remind me what IIH and migraines is like when they're at their worst. And chest colds are 
not also not great because it brings up bad memories of having asthma when I was little. So, you know, <laughs> two very bad situations depending on what happens and it'll go one or the other usually the cold and not feeling well is the reason why there hasn't been any content in the last week thank you guys for sticking around and through the absent video content and podcast content and all of that i appreciate you guys so much the channel still is growing despite the fact that i haven't put out regular content in a little bit so that's fantastic we actually just crested over 400 subscribers on youtube that is something i never thought would be possible like ever i i didn't honestly know if there would be a hundred so you know any amount of reach we get is just amazing the facebook page continues to grow too like there's just a lot of interest in the short content you know there is less interest in the longer content and I think it's just because people have the attention spans now where they like shorter content and shorter sound bites if you guys are wanting stuff that is like easy to share with your family and friends the shorter content is probably the way to go and then they're like oh yeah and if you want to learn more kind of thing you can watch the full video like I do this so that I kind of create sound bites and then leave the discussion for the longer videos just because you can't really get it into the short video content honestly though like I really don't like short content myself like there's some that I enjoy but most of it is I like longer content and podcast length just if you're wanting to follow me on social media you can find me on instagram at awareness with ashley same as on tiktok if you want the shorter content for these podcasts once I get to January's content I actually changed the way I started doing this so the live show content used to be the podcast now though the live shows are going to be their own separate thing this is as of when I get into the stuff from January and then moving forward it'll be like the specific content of the podcast that I filmed separately that'll make it as part of the short content so the only way you'll get to see kind of the live content which I like the live content because it's like what's happening in the moment so I've included a little bit of both in this particular podcast because I haven't done a live show either because I haven't been feeling well enough so I wanted to just update on that and also it's a little bit more current because I talked about everything that's been going on kind of with all of this facebook ashley stewart which is the same as my channel name on youtube and on twitter at ashley stewart 94 which is kind of just i post the short videos on there but it's mainly like my short thoughts and whatever i don't really share a whole lot of content though on twitter anymore just because i find it's a very not so great platform to be on anymore it's more of a little bit of my personal stuff too because i kind of have everything there on that like it's not just one thing that's dedicated to my twitter account if you're watching this on youtube please don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications to all so you never miss a video and you never miss a live like i said With the live content, I'm going to be rotating those between Facebook and YouTube, but I might start focusing on YouTube. I mentioned this in my last live show, I believe. It was either live show or podcast, maybe both, that I may turn to YouTube just because I've noticed that Facebook has been terrible for notifying people about being live. That's not more so on my particular page, but from pages that I like, I notice that I'm not notified as much as I'd like to be and like I'm a supporter or whatever of the page and so like it's a problem because like if you're not if you're paying to see that person's content and you're not getting notified if you're just following a page you're probably not getting notified either so I just have a feeling like it's a problem and so like YouTube as long as you usually have your notifications turned on they're usually pretty good at sending you at least something of a notification so I may switch to doing those on YouTube just to try and make it so that I'm we're getting people into the live because I'd really like to turn those live shows into like very interactive with the audience eventually that being said if you're listening on the podcast please do subscribe and leave a review it helps get 
more listeners onto the podcast. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this particular podcast. I hope it was helpful. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps get the show out there. Hope to see you again next week for our next episode. Bye, everyone.